lovely little composition that just caught my eye. Portrait orientation. I'm not that normally with portrait orientation, but with this particular shot, I really like it. We've got the background interest is the lighthouse, and there's also a big rock to the left-hand side. I really like that, so that's my background interest. Looking for something in the foreground. I've come down quite low to the water because the sea at the moment is really flat and really still. Having said that though, I'll put my 10 stop filter on there and just extend that shutter speed to about a minute, maybe two minutes possibly. It is quite bright, so it might be a bit of a squeeze to get two minutes out, but certainly one minute and I'll flatten that water right down. And what I've actually seen in the foreground that I think is quite interesting is there's a, just a rock that's been side lit by the sun over to my left hand side. I'm struggling to look into the camera at the moment because it's really bright in my face. And that rock that's there um, has got just a few barnacles, uh, just a lot on the left hand side, uh, that's been aptly lit by the sun. And of course with the light on the side of the lighthouse, I think this running through the frame with a few little rocks on there as well, adding nice interest in leading lines is something that's certainly quite nice. I can't walk past it anyway, have to grab it. At ISO 50, at F16, I've managed to um, draw out that shutter speed to a two minute exposure. Very slightly overexposed, but I could tweak that in Photoshop. I just want that extra minute of exposure. I'm focus stacking this image, and the reason why I'm focus stacking this image, even though I'm shooting this at F16, um, so pretty much all of the image is gonna be in focus anyway. The problem I've got is that the foreground interest is really, really close to the camera. It's about three foot away from the camera, if that even. So even at F16, the chances are, if I focus on the rock in the foreground, the background won't be quite as sharp. So I've just focus stacked, basically a focus point on the rock, a focus point on the second rock, which is roughly a third of the way into the frame, and that should do it, but just um, because I can, I've then taken uh, focus at infinity just to finish it off. But I do that very often, well, more often than not, I never even need to use it. Like I say, especially at F16. Nice shot this though. I put the camera back on because I was going to indicate how sometimes it could be awkward to shoot a long exposure. Uh, can you see? <laughs> then all of a sudden the dog jumps into the water. So I put the camera, put the camera on him and he, he took a dump right in front of the camera. Look, get out of my shot. <laughs> Do you know, I wouldn't go as far as to say that photography is a drug, but when you're not out taking pictures and you are normally out taking pictures, especially on a regular basis like I do, you don't have to miss it, you really do. And then when you're actually here, especially on a day like today, you find you're setting your alarm at half past six and before you know it, it's gone lunchtime. And that's the first time you've looked at your watch. I think really, that probably speaks volumes. It really does. What a tremendous day. End of the day sunset shot. Um, we noticed this pretty much on the west coast. Uh, it looks like it's either a walkway into the water uh, or some kind of old launch pad road, whatever, whatever it is. I'm not really sure what it is. But I thought it would look quite interesting. Uh, the only annoyance is, of course, is that uh, absolutely nothing as far as the sunset going on, which is quite strange because the, the sunrise this morning was absolutely fantastic. So really, we've just hung on for another half an hour or so and waited till the blue hour. And I'm just going to take a couple of really simple shots using, um, like I say, this is a, a, a nice leading line. Blue hour, flattened water, probably f5.6 or f8 to give us a two minute exposure with my 10 stopper on there and i'll take a few shots and see how that looks but uh, very minimalistic very blue very nice you could probably just about see me but what a fantastic find this is and to be so disappointed by the fact that there was no sun set tonight but just just hanging on for the blue hour and then coming down and grabbing these shots it's mm, just gorgeous that flat blue sea that blue sky and this handrail that's silhouetted up into the sky is just so minimalistic but it just looks so sweet
something I'm very excited about. I've just started a collaboration with Adam from First Man Photography. I'm sure most of you know Adam. Paul G. Johnson as well. So the three of us, we're going by the name of Photo Nerds and we're creating weekly podcasts. Well, that's the plan anyway. We're already on episode three and we're about to record episode four tomorrow. It's a project I'm very excited about. So if you fancy checking it out, then I'll leave a link in the description or just simply search Photo Nerds from wherever you download your podcasts from or YouTube. Currently walking up Glen Rossa and Gary, who I'm on the island with, spotted to my right hand side four deer. It's like, where's Wally? God, no wonder you walk past and barely see them. I've tried to zoom in as far as I can with this camera just so you guys can see what we're looking at. But there's we're literally in the background there four beautiful stags punching away on grass. I think we're going to come back here tomorrow with our long lenses and do a bit of wildlife photography. Why wouldn't you? If you are like me, and the chances are, you are, if you're going to come to a place you've never been before, you're going to do a bit of research, whether you look at a guidebook or whether you look online. Um, and if you, like we've done now, scouted round four locations, looked online, looked at a couple of guidebooks to find out where the best places to shoot are on the Isle of Arrow, where we currently are. Um, the hard part is getting to those locations and trying your damnedest not to replicate the shots you see in the guidebook. Uh, but of course, the one thing I suppose you have to remember is, you know, there's a, there's a very good reason why those pictures are in the guidebooks to begin with. So an example here is, we started wandering up Glen Rossa towards the saddle there, that massive mountain in the background, which is just totally and absolutely amazing. Now there's an obvious path, you can't really detract or uh, move away from the path, as you walk up, so at the moment now we're looking at the background, you're walking along the obvious path, water next to the path clearly is going to be your foreground interest, so you're looking all the time for something of interest, whether it's a rock, whether it's rapids, um, you're just looking for something of interest, but then all of a sudden, out of the blue, like a ray of light, this amazing, obvious foreground interest appears with the obvious background and that is nearly always the shot that you'll find in the guidebook so what do you do i suppose that's the question um, well we've ignored the shot it does look absolutely amazing pretty similar to the one at glencoe the one that everybody takes at glencoe but really when you go there everybody will tell you you have to take it um, so we've ignored it and we've walked up and walked up and walked up and basically we're at the foot of the mountain now but we have walked up quite a distance probably for about an hour and a half and all we're getting really is the same sort of thing but nice but nothing as good as the obvious shot so do you know what we've traveled all the way up here we're going to grab a few shots but you know what sod's law will dictate no matter how hard you try to be different i just know i'm going to end up going back there and grabbing that a1 shot but like i said earlier that's the reason why it is the a1 shot so i suppose don't be afraid of taking it in actual fact in these conditions i'm quite looking forward to taking it because as much as it's very overcast at this present moment in time it's going to make it a fantastic black and white So 
laughing. <laughs> So as far as landscape shots are concerned, this shot just has everything. It, it absolutely does. Look at that foreground interest with the moving water, just to die for. The mid-range, wandering off up towards the background. Again, it's just awesome. I have no light on that background, but it didn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna come back tomorrow anyway. The weather's meant to be a lot nicer tomorrow. We're gonna come back and try and tie this in with the sunset shot it's not really a sunset shot but with a clear sky fingers crossed we could end up with a backlit pink sky uh so we'll try that for tomorrow but yeah back to this one foreground interest mid-ground interest you've got a big rock there that adds interest to the shot as well you've got the saddle in the background there that mountain range there's just to die for so this really has just all the perfect ingredients of a fantastic landscape shot so just because somebody else has captured it, so what? So what? I'm going to take a portrait orientation shot, then I'm going to take a five or a six portrait uh, orientation landscape shot. So I'll do a nice panoramic shot of this and grab uh, a wide shot, a nice vista. And I much prefer to do that with my 24mm lens and stitch them together as opposed to grabbing a wide angle lens where the, the edges of the lens go, I'm not so keen on that. Yeah. I think... Oh.